Good day grade 10s, welcome to week 31. We're going to be looking at measurement. To start off, we're going to be just revising the very basic concepts of area and perimeter and the area and perimeter calculations or formulae for different shapes. So let's start with the square. The square has got four equal sides, side, side, side and side. So to work out the perimeter, remember the perimeter is just the distance around the outside of your shape. So in this case it's going to be side plus side plus side plus side or we could write it so we could write it as equal to side plus side plus side plus side or we could write it as four times side. Area of a square is always the base times the height but in this case so it's base times height but in this case the base is s and the height is s so we've got side times side or we can write it as side squared right let's look at our next shape we have a rectangle so in this case we don't have four equal sides we've got what we can call this as the base and we can call this as the height. I know in some cases they call this the length and this the breadth that works too. Okay, so do you agree that then this side is equal to this side? So we could also call this the base and this side here is equal to that side so this would also be called the height. So if we had to work out the perimeter, again the perimeter is the distance all the way around. In other words, if we had to walk all the way around here, what would we walk through? We'd walk through a base plus a height plus another base plus another height. Therefore, the perimeter in this case would be 2b plus 2h. Not too difficult. Hey, let's look at the area. The area of a quadrilateral is always base times height, so that makes it very easy. It is just going to be base times height, or you may have learnt it in grade 9 as length times breadth. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. Right, let's look at another one. Let's look at the triangle. A triangle is going to be, obviously, if this is length B and that could then be called length A and this is, could be C, then the perimeter is just the sum of the lengths of the sides. The perimeter is just the sum of the lengths, lengths of the sides. So in other words, in our top example, your perimeter would just be equal to A plus B plus C and similarly at the bottom. But now, let's look at our area. Our area of a triangle is actually equal to half times base times height. And the reason for that is because if you look at a quadrilateral. Let's say for example we've got a parallelogram. So a quadrilateral is always given by base times perpendicular height but if I break that up into half then it is a triangle. So the area of a triangle is always half the base times the perpendicular height. So in this case it would be in this triangle it would just be a half times b times h and if we had to do an example it would be a half times by the base which is 14 times by the perpendicular height which is 10 so that would be a half of 140 which is just going to be 70 units squared. Remember that your area is always squared. Okay, let's look at another example, trapezium. Now again your trapezium is very easy when it comes to the perimeter. You just add all the sides. You just add the lengths of all the sides. That's nice and easy, hey? The sides. But if we get the area the area is a special one. It is half the sum of the parallel sides of 
multiplied by the perpendicular height. That is the area of a trapezium. The area of a trapezium is half the sum of the parallel sides times by the perpendicular height. Now I personally think it's very important to remember all these different formula because a lot of them are the same and therefore it's very useful when you get to something that's a bit strange like a trapezium. But I know that a lot of people struggle to remember this, so what they tend to do is break it up. So if you have the numbers, you can do that that's a triangle, you could break that up, and then you've got a triangle, and you've got a rectangle, and it'll work out to be the same. But in this case, let's say for example, A was equal to 6, and B was equal to 10, and let's say our height was 2. Then it would be a half times the sum of the parallel sides, which would be 6 plus 10. 10 times by the perpendicular height which is 2 so that would be 6 plus 10 is 16 and these actually cancel so that just becomes 16 units squared okay so it's not that difficult right let's look at another shape the parallelogram now the parallelogram is just base times height and the reason the par parallelogram is just base times height is I could actually drop a line down here and drop a line down here and then I could take this triangle and move it over to there and then what you'd have is a rectangle and we know that the area of a rectangle is just your base times your height so if we had to cut this corner of the rectangle off and pop it onto this other side then we can see that the area of a parallelogram is still equal to base times the height but now we need to be specific and we call it the perpendicular height the perpendicular height and the reason we do that is because later on you'll learn that this line here would be called the slant height so the perpendicular height is the height that's perpendicular at 90 degrees to the base and that there is how we'd work out the area of a parallelogram again the perimeter is just adding all the sides I'm not going to go there moving on let's get to the circle ah the circle the circle is very special it has pi in it so these you need to learn and the area of a circle the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared whereas the circumference which is also called the perimeter is 2 times pi r and sometimes people call that just pi d where d stands for the diameter and in case you've forgotten the r is obviously our radius our radius and pi is a function it's actually the division of the diameter divided by the circumference but you don't need to know that you can find it on your calculator so that is it the area of the circle is pi r squared and the circumference is 2 pi r or pi d the reason sometimes people use this is 2 times r is D. So that's why they sometimes use that if they've been given the diameter instead of the radius. The easy way to remember this is that the area is always units squared. The area is units squared. Therefore, it makes sense that the formula for the area is going to be a pi r squared, whereas your circumference is 2 pi r. Right, grade 10, you need to make sure that you know how to work out the area and the perimeter of all these shapes because you're going to need it in future questions. Please study it and then go practice. Have a wonderful day. Ooh.